asubuhi na mapema sauti yangu ikufikie ni sauti ya shukurani sauti ya sifa kwako jehova mimi nitakuimbia jehova mimi nitakuimbia asubuhi na mapema sauti yangu ikufikie ni sauti ya shukurani sauti ya sifa kwako umeufurahisha moyo wangu yesu kwa matendo yako Kukushukuru ewe Mungu ni jambo jema Kukushukuru ewe Mungu kutangaza rehema zako Asubuhi na uaminifu wako wakati wa usiku ni jambo jema Kukushukuru Bwana ni jambo jema Kukushukuru ewe Mungu kutangaza rehema zako Asubuhi na uaminifu wako wakati wa jioni wonderful evening the Lord has given to all of us. The grace of the Lord is sufficient to each one of us this night. My heart is full of joy once again to be with you on this uh, wonderful family hour. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you that are already joined us online. 
Thank you so much, Godwin. Thank you for being there. Thank you, Maureen, Ben, and Binga, and others. And the Lord bless you so much for joining us uh, this night. My team is not available tonight. They are away on a mission. But uh, I felt it was important for me to just have this fellowship to, with you tonight. And I'm delighted to just join you for this uh, wonderful night. I want us to pray before we go to the word of the Lord. I want you to bring your family members and share this uh, uh, broadcast and uh, let everyone uh, know that we are alive and we are alive. And the Lord bless you. Let's pray. Precious Father, in the name that is above every name, we thank you. We do exalt and magnify you because there is no God like unto you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are our Father. And tonight, dear Lord, as I join with my fellow brethren across uh, the globe and nations, I pray, dear Lord God Almighty, you stretch forth your divine hand and reach out unto every individual by your spirit and by your power. We come against every evil forces of darkness that hinder and stop people from receiving that which the Holy Spirit has to say. And tonight, dear Lord God, I commit my heart, my life unto thee, asking you, Jehovah Father, to use this vessel to minister to somebody's life. We pray, dear Master, that those who are joined and those who are coming on, may you give them also the desire and the heart to understand that which you are saying, at this time, Lord, we glorify your holy name for our nation this, morning, this night as we pray for the president, the deputy, and the, all the leadership of this nation. We commit them into their hands. The Lord, at this time when there is a lot of confusion and dilemma in the world, Lord, give them wisdom to rule, to, to lead, and to guide your people in the way that this nation should go. We believe this is the time, Jehovah Father, that we, we need your intervention. May you prosper this nation, prosper everything that is happening and the decisions that have been made that are glorifying your holy name. Father, we pray for the body of Jesus Christ. At this time, we pray, dear Lord, that you'll give every brethren, every man and every woman and every child of God, give them the joy of serving you even in tough times. May your blessing rest upon each individual. Lord, I pray for our families this night. I commit all of them into their hands, my own personal families, and all those dear Father God that have joined us. We commit them into thy hands. That Lord God, you may keep them, protect them from all these calamities and the, uh, the pandemic that is are ravaging the nations lord may you stretch forth your hand and protect your own for they are hiding under the shadow of the almighty we glorify your holy name because you are the lord god our healer and that jehovah father by the stripes of jesus we were healed and so we declare healing we declare prosperity we declare peace to every home in the name of jesus lord we exalt you in Jesus name we do pray and every soul shouted amen glory to the name of Jesus uh, we appreciate all of you tonight for your uh, being there and uh, tonight I just wanted to uh, have a short time of encouraging somebody and sharing a few thoughts that will help us as believers and as children of the Almighty God. May the hand of the Almighty God be upon your life tonight. I want to talk on uh, the topic flourishing in changing times. Flourishing in changing times. Uh, our text this evening comes from the book of Genesis chapter 8 verse number 22. Genesis 8 verse 22 the Bible says while the earth remains seed time and harvest cold 
and the heat winter and the summer and day and night shall not cease while the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and the heat winter and the summer and day and night shall not cease now these are the words the covenant words that God gave to his servant Noah when Noah had just escaped the floods that destroyed the entire earth it was um, a very devastating moment that um, many people died the young, the old, the rich, the poor, those who are educated, those who are intelligent, those who are not. They perished and only a few people survived through that pandemic. It was a disaster on the face of the earth and yet it was God's judgment over that generation because of their way waywardness and because of forsaking the God who created them and they began to live for their own self. And because of that, God was not happy with that generation. And so God decided to uh, wipe, it, wipe it out using the floods. And so when Noah and his family escaped, when they escaped, the Bible says that God gave him a covenant. And in that covenant, one of the statements in the covenant that God made, he said to him, after smelling uh, the good savor uh, from the sacrifice that was offered by the man of God, Noah, God said, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest cold and heat winter and summer and day and night shall not cease now this is talking about various changing times and seasons and so he says that so long as the earth is there these changes are bound to happen and we are bound to experience all kinds of changing times so he designed it and he proclaimed it that so long as the earth is there and so long as you are here on earth my friend you will always go through various changing times because God has designed the world and all that is therein to experience these changing times nothing is constant on the face of the earth and this is what we ought to know that's how you need to uh, understand that nothing is constant nothing is static circumstances in the in this life will never be the same all the time things will always change around you there is a time Paul says that there is a time I was a child or I was a baby and now I am matured. So when you are in a certain season, there are certain things that are expected of you to do. He says when I was a baby, I behaved like a baby. And when I was a young man, I behaved like a young man. But when I matured, I behaved differently. Now when seasons come, you have to also
this wise man Solomon is giving to us he says that there is time for everything under the earth there is time for everything to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven now this is to just show us that whatever you are experiencing at this time it doesn't mean that it is permanent you may be going through painful times it doesn't mean that it is uh, permanent to remain there everything is prone to change somebody say there is an expiry time for every challenge that you go through there are times that things may look so difficult devastating in your family but you need to know that's just a season for it that's just a season for it your family may be going through a certain time but it's a season another season is coming the bible says that in the book of um, psalms chapter 30 uh, verse number 6 it says now in my prosperity i said i shall never be moved you see sometimes when things are good we forget that things can change so david is saying that now in my prosperity i said i shall never be moved you are confident that things are constant nothing will go wrong everything is okay but he says this the lord by your favor you have made my mountains stand strong you hid your face and then i was troubled when things looked okay he felt there was stability there was the like the mountain that is standing strong that he is walking and living under the favor of god and that nothing can easily go wrong but then the bible says that god hid his face and when he hid his face he entered into trouble so there are times that god will want to see what is our attitude when we are going through certain circumstances when you are enjoying peace when you are enjoying prosperity when you are enjoying good times when you are enjoying uh excellence and everybody is praising you there are times that god withdraws for a moment to see how do you behave when things and times and seasons change and so he says your face was turned away you hid your face and i was troubled verse 8 says then i cried out to you O lord and to the Lord I made supplications. Verse 9 he says, What profit is there in my blood? When I go down to the pit, with the dust praise you, will it declare your truth? He is making supplication and intercession and petitions to the Almighty God. He says, Hear, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. Be my helper. You have turned for, uh, you have turned for me my, my morning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. So a time comes when God does something so that we can turn to him. It is so easy in times of joy and prosperity for people to assume that all is well and that sometimes in your seasons of prosperity you forget that it is not by your might, it is not by your power that it was just by the hand of God you are what you are. In the days of his favor, it is very easy for you to assume that you are the only most favorable one. And you think others are not as favored as you are. And so David is painting a picture to us here. And he says when God hid his face, 
then trouble came. And there are times that God may not, it may not be that he is not there. But he just doesn't look at you and uh, favors you at that particular hour or moment to test what is in your heart. To know what is your attitude. And to draw your attention sometimes. The Bible says, I cried out to you. And the Bible says, this is what he supplicated. He says, oh Lord, and the Lord, uh, and to the Lord I made a supplication. He says, what profit is there in my blood? And when I go down to the pit, because the situation was so bad, that he felt like he was about to die. And he said to God, if I die today, I will not praise you in the pit. I will, how will the dust praise your name? He says, will it declare your truth? So give me another chance. Give me another moment so that I can be able to praise you. And not only that, to also declare your goodness in the land of the living. So that I can pro pro proclaim your power, your testimonies, your goodness. This is what he was praying for. And I, have, I came here this night just to uh, stir you up and to tell you things may have been good, but things have turned negative on your side. It is time for you to call on the name of the Lord because the Bible says whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed. You shall not be confounded. It is good for us to pray. And we need to maximize the moments that God has given to us to seek his face. And he cried out to God and he said, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. God opens a door for us to approach his throne. He wants us to be bold to go before him so that we receive help in time of need. He says, Lord, hear me. He said, Lord, you are my help. Be my help in this season. And the Bible says, verse 11, Then God turned his mourning into dancing. And this is my prayer this night, that may the Lord turn your mourning into dancing in this season. That when things seem to be so bad, our God is still able to turn them around. And let there be a breakthrough in your life as he stands out and stretches forth his hand to help you out of this situation. He says, you have put off my sackcloths and you have clothed me with gladness. May that be your portion tonight. Psalms 30 verse 5, he says this, for his anger is but for a moment. His anger is but for a season. It's just for a moment. But his favor is for your life. It's for life. And he says, weeping may endure for a night. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. So weeping may endure just for a night. And this is what I want to say to you. This is a word of encouragement to you tonight. That as a family, you've been going through morning times. You've been going through weeping. You've been going through crying. And things have seemed to be so bad. There was a woman who had lost her son. And the Bible says Jesus was on the way to Jericho. And as he was going into the city, uh, the city of Nine, I'm sorry. The Bible says people were coming out of the city and they were carrying a dead man in, in, on, in, in a coffin going to bury. And this woman that was, uh, had lost the son was also a widow. And so she was in very deep mourning time. It was weeping. She had just lost her husband maybe a few years earlier. And now the only hope that she had is the son and the son is dead. And um, the Bible says that everybody was, was with her, escorting her only hope to the grave. Going to bury her only hope in life.
But Jesus understood the cry, the supplication, the prayer of this widow woman. And he decided to divert his route to go the way that this woman was to answer her prayer. And I see God turning to your side to answer your prayer tonight. You may be in pain at this moment, but God is still able to answer your prayer. He is able to answer and bring you joy even in this season. The Bible says he went, touched that, great, that coffin, and he, he told everybody to stop and to stop making noise. And he looked at the woman and he said, Woman, weep not. Woman, do not weep. And the Bible says that he prayed for the young man. He said, young man, rise up. And the Bible says he woke up and he handed over the boy to, the, to this widow woman. I believe he turned her morning into dancing. The, 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 the hour that they were all going to bury, they turned into celebrating the life of this young man. And so God is still able to turn you are mourning into dancing. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, he is able to remove the sack clothes, the clothes of crying and mourning, and give you dancing clothes and clothes and garments of gladness this night. The Bible says, His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. May the joy come unto you tonight in the name of Jesus. The word of God is very clear to you that he is able to change your season. He is able to change that season. And so be prepared to not just be stuck in that kind of situation that you are in. You may be prosperous today. But be ready knowing that something can happen that can change your gains in life. Because things change in this life. You may have friends and they may tomorrow be your betrayers. They may hate you tomorrow. They may not want to be close to you tomorrow. You may have joy today but tomorrow you may be having a problem. So it is not uh, just the season you are in that... Um, uh, is going to remain like that. Allow God to be the God of all seasons in your life. The Bible says he is the God in the mountains. He is also God in the valleys. He is the God in the morning. He is God in the evening. He is still God. He has never changed. He says I am God and I change the Lord. That's why the children of Israel have not been destroyed. It is not those who are strongest or the richest, or the most educated, or men who, or who are intelligent, only who survive life's changing times. But those who are most responsive to the change, you have to be responsive to change. You have to be responsive because those who are traditionally rigid or suspicious, and the skeptical, they find it very difficult to adjust to changing times. And they easily get overtaken by every emerging trends. Like the times that we are living in today. We are still skeptical. There are so many people who are still very skeptical. They are saying all kinds of things. They are saying because the, the government is being given money. Uh, these numbers that are being mentioned about COVID-19. Uh, they are just numbers that are being cranked up. Because the government is looking for more funding. But I want you to know my friends. People are dying of this disease. COVID-19 is a disease. It is a, a calamity. It, it will be... It will be I mean, it can be a very stupid government that closes up the economy, allows people to die because of um, various other areas of needs, hunger and famine and other things. And yet they still insist that we still have to have a lockdown or we have to be shut down or go into quarantine. I want you to know 
It is only a madman who can go that direction just because they want money. I want you to know the amount of money governments are losing in terms of, uh, in terms of economic collapsing and the people not having jobs. It is more than what the funding is being given. It is better to have your people have safety and be uh, have safety and be in health than to have your entire population being wiped out because of a calamity. And so this skepticism can also destroy a people. Now, if we are rigid, we can easily find ourselves in trouble. Now, that does not mean that our God is not a healer. But you need also to know you cannot sit in a burning house. You know that the, the house is on fire and you are sitting there speaking in tongues and you say, I know my God is going to help me and to quench this fire. And you, are, you know what to do. God gave us the brain and he gave us right judgment. He has given us wisdom to make ruling and judgment on what we ought to do. So you need to know that when you are rigid or suspicious or skeptical, you'll find yourself in difficult times. It becomes difficult to adjust to changes. We are living in a changing time. We are living in very uncommon seasons and we need to change. My advice to you as a pastor is that if there are protocols that you must follow, please follow them. They will be of great help to you tomorrow because you, you are able to escape because you, have, you followed instructions. And changing times uh, can easily uh, destroy a people when you are not changing with the times. You know, we, uh, we, we, we have been told keep distance. Please keep distance. And if they, uh, they have given us time to, uh, to have a hundred people in the church, for those who can handle that hundred people, handle the hundred people. And even if you have more people that you need to have in your church, but a hundred is, it doesn't make sense. Use the hundred people that God, that God has given opportunity for so that you can have prayer. Activate the altar of God in prayer. Don't just say, no, me, I'm not going to open just because these people are too few. Use those few people, do the, uh, the online recording, but use those few people to spend time in the house of God to pray. Bring them in. Let, the, let us activate the altars of God that have been called for a while. So the world is changing. And as it is changing so rapidly, let's adjust to the changing times. The world is changing so rapidly that those who are born uh, and found things not the, the same way that they are, they are wondering what is happening. For example, those who are born in my, in my generation, those who are born probably earlier than us, in the, uh, before the, uh, the Second World War, for example, there are so, those who are still alive, as they see the changing times, they are wondering where is the world going to? Where is the world heading to? But if they are changing with times, they will enjoy as times come by. Because there is a time that comes and there is a time that goes. So please, let's change. Let's allow this change uh, to change us. Let's change the changing times and things will be okay with us. Glory to the name of Jesus. For example, you know, we have a lot of things changing around us. Technology is changing. And the changing that is taking place is mind-boggling. When you think you have actually seen enough of the changing technology, tomorrow something powerful, more sophisticated is rolled out. And you begin to wonder now, I thought we had it. Things are changing so rapidly. I was just talking to my, one of my sons and uh, I was asking him because I, I read somewhere about a technology called nanotechnology. 
and I want, was wondering what is now nanotechnology. And he was telling me this is a, a, a technology where something so minute can carry so much power that you can wonder what it is going to do. Like uh, uh, they are now creating very small, tiny insect-like uh, applications that you can be wondering uh, it can penetrate into your house to spy on you. And this is the world we are living in. That's the kind of technology that is going to be put in people's foreheads and people's forearms to carry all the information. So we are living in changing times. Technology is changing so rapidly and is mind-boggling. It is the same. Everything that is changing around us is so rapid that those who are rigid, they are going to just be left behind or they get themselves messed up. So we must allow ourselves to change with the changing times. Trends impact everyone. When things change around us, they impact you. All the trending things, they impact everyone. But those who have a, who have a mind to see a better future and they are just to the better future, they themselves don't just get impacted but they carefully analyze and strategically respond to the changing times you know when i was in the army we were taught to assess the enemy carefully and adapt assess the situation because you do not know the new strategy that the enemy is coming to attack you with or to confront you with you cannot predict always what the enemy is going to confront you with. And so you have to apply yourself to how the occasion may demand without losing focus to your determined focus or your, your determined goal, what you intended to do. If you want to prosper in this life, then you have to adjust because things are changing. And as you adjust, uh, do as the occasion demands. Assess the situation adapt to it be strategic in everything that you are doing so that you do not get yourself left behind in whatever is happening be flexible be flexible enough to wriggle through the changing times the changing trends and the changing strategies of your enemy without playing into his trap without playing into his trap so be flexible be tactical in everything that is happening be innovative look at trends and respond to them in an innovative way as it is it is so diverse that unless we are changing with everything that is happening around us we will find ourselves lost so we are in the era of global opportunity this is a time that um if you make good use of the change, it will benefit you. Tomorrow you benefit because, for example, for a long time, people didn't know what masks are. Many years, no, no tailor would, would go to, uh, to the extent of making ma face masks. But when the change hit, people began to make uh, the, the masks. They are benefiting from it. There are people who are making soap. They are changing. They are ma making advantage, taking advantage of what is happening. There are those who are making PPEs. They are ma making money out of that. There are those who are doing something uh, because the times have changed. There are those who are making beds, you know, the hospital beds, and they are making a kill out of it because you have to know that when a change comes, it is loaded with some advantage. It is loaded with opportunities. There are those who are losing jobs, but there are those who are innovative, who are creating jobs for themselves. They are creating opportunities for themselves. And so they are changing. You can flourish even when change comes. So don't be rigid. There are things that, for example, when... Uh, those people who are making uh, like the, the, the clocks, the Seiko watches, that when the change came, they had to change to go digital. 
those who are making transition uh, to, uh, transistor radios and transistor televisions those huge ones if they remained like that things would have changed and they would have remained irrelevant and there are many companies that close those who are making uh tapes or gramophones when things change if they never change they close the shop because things are changing and we must change with them we must adjust to those changes and i want you to know that even our worship in the church is about to change and as it changes we can't remain in 2020 i mean in 20 uh 2000 uh or 2000 or 1900 and uh, yet things have changed in this uh generation that's why <coughs> excuse me that's why we are now reaching you by technology so that church can be everywhere should be dynamic we should be diverse. We should be looking at things from a different angle and from a different perspective so that we don't become irrelevant in our time. So change with, with times and in every area uh, so that things don't overtake you. And I, it is my prayer that you will not be overtaken. So be innovative. Be innovative. Look at trends and respond to them positively and be uh, be able to create new ways for yourself. We are in this era and we must be willing to do things as the Lord gives us the grace and the strength. That's why Paul says in Philippians 4, verse number 12, he says, I know how to abase and I know how to abound. I know how to abase and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have learned how to abound and to abase. I know how to abase. To abase simply means I know how to humble and how to go down and how to have nothing and I also know how to live with everything. You can have all things and you can have nothing. And so whatever you have, if you are used to spending a hundred thousand shillings a day, you can adjust and live on only five thousand shillings a day. If you are living on a salary of five thousand, and now that you don't have 5,000, you can live on 500. That's what it means. It means learn to adjust with times so that you do not become extravagant when you have nothing. It says, I know how to abase and I know how to abound. In everywhere and in all things. In everywhere, everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. My friend, even if you had prosperity and now you're forced to go to the farm and to till the ground or to look for chicken and to rear a few birds and have some eggs, please do it. You don't have to just sit there and continue expecting a job. Sometimes in the army there is what we call retreat. When the battle gets hot on the front line, you don't allow your armies to be killed on the front line, all of them. Sometimes you have to retreat and to re-strategize and to replan and then to gain strength and go back, bounce back. And there's a time you're going to bounce back. So if things are not working the way you are used to, change. Change. It's just a simple advice. That's why I said I didn't come here to preach to you. I just came to talk so that we can adjust. Let's adjust. If you didn't have a house at home, don't worry if you can go there and just do a small one-room house. It is better than living in town and you don't have rent for 15,000 shillings a month. And you don't have anything. So why not retreat? Go and spend time, energize yourself, get more energy, strategize, come back in strength. And that's how it works. 
So Paul is saying, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So be flexible. Mama, be flexible. Don't allow yourself to, you want to eat nyama every day and there's no way you can get uh, the nyama today. Yes, watoto wali zoea. But now, wazoeza maharagwe. They'll still get the same nutrients. And it will be a blessing. So adjust. Adjust. You need to know that some of these things work together for good. They work together for good. For those that love the Lord. Whether it is in pain or in whatever situation. Isaiah chapter 45. He says in verse 6. That they may know from the rising of the sun. To its setting. That there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I formed the light, verse 7, and I create darkness as well. I formed the light and I also create the light, the darkness. It says, I make peace and I also create war or calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. So sometimes some things are allowed by God to happen to help us know that he is God and when he picks you out of that situation then you can know that indeed this God is God indeed in my life so and learn to abound learn to abase and do all things through him that gives you strength he is ever there you cannot hide from him he is always God and because he is always God he is God in all seasons but it is you that must adjust to any coming trend or a season of life. Finally, brethren, there is a scripture that Paul, uh, uh, David writes in the book of Psalms 139, verse number 7. He says, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my, my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead, lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely, the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me, indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. In other words, in whatever circumstance, in whatever situation, in whatever case you are in, as David says in Psalms 23, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not be afraid for you are there together with me. And so there is no situation you are in that God cannot reach you. There is no challenge you are experiencing that God cannot lift you from it. But when we humble ourselves before his mighty hand, this God is well able to elevate us, to lift us, and to make us survive through all that. Don't collapse in this situation. Don't allow yourself to die when it is not your time to die. This is temporary situation and God is there with you. And so may the Lord God bless you. And as we adjust ourselves, let's continue in prayer. Let's continue seeking the face of the Lord. Meet on Sunday and uh, go to the house of God even though you are few. Listen to the advice of your pastor. Spend time in the house of God and pray. We need to pray. We have been given at least the opening that we need to have. This opportunity, let's use it. Use it in, on Monday morning, Monday morning glory. Use it lunch hour time. Use it in the evening for prayer. Use it on Tuesday. Use it on Wednesday. Use morning, lunch hour, evening. 
There's nobody who is going to stop you. If you come in the morning, a hundred of you. You come in the lunchtime, a hundred of you. You come in the evening, a hundred of you. If you come on Sunday, five services, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. At least the house of God will be warm. The prayer will be arising to the glory of the living God. We will be seeking his face. And I want you to know, the more we pray, the more we pierce the heavens, the more opening we will get. And the Lord will bless you. So do not sit at home and you say, oh no, we have just been given a hundred people, so let me not go. No, go. Ask your pastor, well, what time can I come to the house of God? And what time can we pray? It is not just, church is not just a place for preaching and preaching and preaching. A church is a place of worship. You can have one hour of just worshiping the Lord. Just spend the whole day, I mean the whole one hour, worshiping the Lord. And spend another hour with another hundred people preaching or speak, speaking the word of God and encouraging. So it is possible to do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So let's not just complain. Let's use the time we have been given to us. Do not close the house of God. Now that we have been given opportunity, open it. I tell you, open it. As a father, I tell you, open it. And as you open it, use that opportunity. I know we have challenges, those of us who have mega churches. We have challenges, and I know the challenges because I am part of that. But I know that it is, it is also possible for all of us, and those who have churches that are, have capacity to handle at least 100 people in that service, or 50, please do. Let's go to the house of God and seek his face and wait for the next moment. This is only for 21 days. After the 21 days, there will be an assessment. And after that, something else may come up. But if we don't play, if we don't pray, then we are giving the devil an opportunity and we are playing into his tricks. The devil wants the church closed. The devil wants us to say, we don't want this short moment you have given us. And then when we do that, then the devil will say, we gave you an opportunity, you refuse, so we rem you remain closed until the things will change. Listen to me. Things are not going to change. Use the opportunity. Maximize that opportunity and make, make the best out of this difficult situation and glorify the Lord and the Lord will bless you. Bless the people of God. Pray for the kingdom of God to expand and let the glory of God shine on the face of the earth. The Bible says when the earth, uh, okay, when darkness covers the earth, let the glory of the Lord shine. And so let this glory of God shine in these difficult times. Show God that we are willing to open his altars and he will stand together with us in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you tonight. I love you. God bless you. Let's pray. Precious Father, thank you for all the opportunities and the challenges and the times that you have given unto us. I pray, dear Lord, that you bless us. Give us wisdom. Give us intelligence. Give us understanding. To make best use of the opportunities that you avail to us. Give us the ability to be innovative in every situation that we are in. Help us to learn to abound in all things and in every situation. So that we are just with times and the changings, the changes that take place are all around us. And they are so rapid. The Lord God, you give us ability to be flexible in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray healing and restoration and comfort to everyone that is not feeling well in the name of Jesus. Our brothers and sisters that are feeling sick and they are bedridden, they are in the hospitals. We speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that we'll expand our time of worship. You'll expand the number of people that we expect in our churches as we begin this coming Sunday. And those who are already meeting midweek, Lord, may you cause the people of God to go to the house of God to worship. It doesn't matter because you're not, you are, you are, you are not the God of a day. You're the God of every season. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much. And... Uh, Continue praying. Let's see the glory of God in our homes. Please remember our offering. Uh, our offering pay bill number is 599 And the Lord will bless you as you give to God 
even tonight. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Bueno